Gina Julu, congratulations on your third place. How do you feel about it? I feel pretty good. Yeah, I mean, yesterday was pretty stressful, but it's good to finally actually know and relax and enjoy the symposium a bit more. Yeah, I can understand that. Coming to your essay, like, what was like the main motivation? Why did you choose that topic? Why did I choose the topic? Um, uh, you know, I do virtual reality and augmented reality, and I saw a huge void um, between using this really powerful technology uh, for something a little bit larger that has larger societal implications. Because right now, um, this medium is being used for entertainment, and so you know, uh, how we can best make better videos, better cinema, uh, using it for like roller coaster rides, which is all fantastic, but I wanted to sort of use it for um, a way that we can develop our, our learning. And you talk about education and you also criticize today's education system a bit. Like why? I did, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, we're, I, I don't know about you, but I grew up essentially with an iPad and I grew up, you know, being super interactive with media at all times. And I think it's really interesting that we're still using textbooks and chalkboards, which we used, you know, in the 1800s, which is really meaningful, but um, trying to, you know, use that with, with digital natives like me in classrooms, people who have really short attention spans, and um, it's just not really that compatible. I think that our educational systems are very archaic, and I think we need to use VR in order to develop our learning and, and encode really nuanced, contextualized uh, information, essentially. Will we, in your like your future model or in your um, imagination, will we still use teacher? Will we use classrooms? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a really big issue right now in virtual reality is the content that's being created. So like I said, a lot of the focus is um, just in entertainment in general and educators, instructors are going to be very important in consolidating the information that we're teaching to our students. Um, because, you know, even if um, schools everywhere around the world said, we don't want to use this application, we don't want to use VR to taint our children, what we're essentially I ensuring for the next you know, 20 to 30 years is students getting and learning and encoding information through entertainment, which can be good or bad. So I think it's much more useful um, uh, for our societies to really be strategic about the content that we're using and um, using to teach our students and educators and instructors are going to be crucial for that. Yeah. So one critical question, at least. <laughs> I'll, I can take another yeah. one, I'm sure, after. <laughs> yeah, after all the, the ones from yesterday, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, sure. Who's paying for it? Who's paying for it? Well, I mean, as I mentioned on stage, it's super cost effective. So um, right now, there are so many companies that are looking to get their hardware and software out um, into consumer hands. And there are ways that companies uh, can sort of partner with uh, institutions, educational institutions, to link up software with content, with, you know, whatever the school is looking for to make it um, accessible for students and obviously at the very beginning this is kind of a expensive technology until and until we kind of find a framework um, or a model that works within these schools that we will obviously pilot um, it's going to be a bit expensive but then hopefully the cost will, will even out and um, I think the larger like longer implications are uh, you get much more of a return out of it so hopefully I mean you know Sure. Yeah. sure, sounds good. And thank you very much for your time and yeah, enjoy your time here. That's it. I'm That's done. it. Awesome. You're done. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>